Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to install the Android operating system as a VM on VirtualBox. Uh, so there's different versions of the Android OS you could download and try to install. Some work better than others, but I found this version called Lineage, which works uh, really well. And they actually have a VDI file, so you don't even have to install it. You just need to attach the drive and configure your VM and it's good to go. And they even have a VMDK for VirtualBox as well. So once you download it, it'll just be a 7-zip file. And if we uh, extract it, let's say. So when you extract it, you might want to extract it somewhere where you're going to keep it for good because if you um, attach it to your virtual machine and then move it to a different location, it's going to break the connection there. But since I already have one configured, this is just a test. So once you extract it, there's your file right there. So let's just copy this path here. So now to create a new VM, just go to New. Let's just call this Test Android because I already have one configured here. And then you probably want to set the folder to where your uh, VDI file as well, just so everything's in the same place. Uh, for type, I do Other and then Other Unknown 64 bit. There is a 32 bit version of this as well, but I'm using the 64. We don't want the unattended install, so we'll skip that. So, hardware. Uh, you could give it whatever you like here. Let's just say 4 gigs for fun. Processors, one is fine. Now for hard disk, you want to use an existing virtual hard disk. So now you would normally add it here. You know, click on add, go here, and do this. So I'll use this guy here. All right, so we got our name, our hardware setup. Our virtual disk file attached. So we'll click on finish. And now the important thing here is you need to go back to the settings, go to display. You can bump this up if you want to whatever. But you want to make sure this is on VBox VGA, not SVGA or not VBox SVGA. I think the default might be this. So you want to put it there. And you might get a message that says invalid settings detected. So if so, just ignore it. So we'll click OK, and now we'll go ahead and start it. Just pick the first choice here. Okay, so that little screen that went across there took some time, so I'll probably just fast forward that so don't you know don't expect it to go that quick. All right, so now we have our desktop here. I uh, see pretty basic, but you could do things like long hold to get to your wallpapers and widgets. Then you could also swipe across by holding to get to your next screen. You know, you could click on stuff there. Then you have your uh, open apps window, you could clear them all. You can also drag icons for your apps to other locations. You have your dock here with all your apps in it. You can even drag these onto the main screen. And of course, to uh, download more apps, you'll have to log into the Play Store. Then you have your, you know, your back button, search bar up top. If you click at the top here, you have your notifications. So it says it's um, using wireless, even though it's not really wireless because you know it doesn't know any better <laughs> you know, that there's an Ethernet connection here. And so you might get this message here. Google Play Store won't run unless you update Google Play services. And then you'll have to go ahead and do that. And of course, you'll have to sign in to do that. But then after you do this, you'll be able to you know, access the Play Store and download apps. And you can also get to your settings here. You know, see other notifications. You know, set up your account. It's got virtual Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, obviously. Brightness is not going to change since it's not really a touch screen. It's a virtual machine. Got your sound, your apps, your storage. Shows the four gigs that I added there. Status bar, profiles. 
date and time. You might need to change your date and time. See, this says 239 and it's 1139. So if I go here, pick the time zone. Like so. And then one other thing too you might notice is obviously since it's a virtual machine there's no physical power buttons like a phone or tablet would have but you can actually go to the machine uh, menu here and click ACPI shutdown and it'll actually bring up the uh, power options for the uh, VM and if it, if it didn't do that there are apps you could install I think one's even called power button or something that'll bring you this screen as well but this seems to work at least in, in my situation so I could actually restart or power it off like so. All right, so once again, just you know, set up a typical VM, use the uh, other 64-bit, make sure you go to the uh, display settings and change this to the top one, VBox VGA, and attach your file, and then you should be uh, good to go. I'll put a link in the description. You could download the uh, 64-bit or 32-bit version and try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.